welcome back to Wogan Now and Then. I first interviewed my next guest in 1991. Before then, he was best known as a popular BBC sports presenter, but by the time he'd appeared on Wogan, his life had taken a dramatic change. He proclaimed he was the son of the Godhead, he wore turquoise, as he believed it brought him closer to God. Have a look at this. So evil has been in control of the planet for 12,000 years? It has been the dominating force. Evil's not the right word. It is imbalance. Um, but it has been increasingly in control. As I repeat, survey the world, ladies and gentlemen. Is, is the force of love in control of this world, guiding this planet at this time? Of course not. The negativity, the thoughts that I'm talking about that are very destructive, are pouring out of this planet well, let me, let me um, every day. Was it, was it a great shock for you to discover this at 38? Well, I, th I, think the, <laughs> I, think the word, I think the word is gobsmacked. But again, again, you know the best way of removing negativity is to laugh and be joyous. So I'm delighted that there's so much laughter in the audience tonight. But no, um, it's a... But just let, just let me, just let me say this. They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. It's fine. I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that to be hurtful. Terry. I don't want you to misinterpret it. They're not laughing in sympathy with you. So, well, 15 years ago, he was ridiculed for his prophecies about natural disasters around the world. And now he has a controversial new view about who really is running the world. I'm delighted that he's agreed to come back. David Icke. Thank you, no problem. Nice to see you. Thank you. Now, again, when I see that, I always, I'm slightly embarrassed by it because it, I thought it was a bit, I thought it was a bit sharp with that comment. So, and at the time I said I didn't mean it to embarrass you. So, that interview at the time, it changed everything for you, didn't it? Well, it changed everything in the sense of, um, I couldn't walk down any street in Britain without being laughed at by most of the people. Hmm. Um, going in a pub, there was uproar. Um, a comedian only had to say my name to get a laugh. And what that does is it <laughs> reveals to you the level of immaturity that passes for adulthood um, in this country, whereby clearly a guy was going through an incredible experience. And instead of being mature and saying, why is this guy gone? from being this, what you would call, straight, normal television presenter to how he is now. This is interesting. What's happening here? Instead, and I heard the ripples of laughter 16 years on when my name was mentioned, people just laughed. But the other, which gave me a real insight, especially given what I'm doing now in my books, about how easy it is for the few to control the many. Because the many, you know, we laugh at sheep because sheep just follow the one in front. Ah, oh, stupid sheep. We humans have out sheep the sheep because at least the sheep need a sheepdog to keep uh, them in line. Humans keep each other in line. And they do it by ridiculing or condemning anyone who commits the crime, because that's what it's become, of being different. I had a choice, Terry, at that point. I could have ended up with, faced with that scale of ridicule and ended up shaking in the corner. Or I could have said, as I did, laugh, condemn, I don't give a damn. This is me. And if you don't like me, well, that's, that's bad news because this is the only me there is. And I refuse to conform uh, and be bowed by the ridicule. And what, what it does, Terry, when you step out of the little box of what will other people think, how do I put this in a way that people won't think I'm crazy, you then realize how small a box you've actually been living in. But you do understand that, and I know you do, that you did make yourself a target because what you were saying was outlandish. It was by, by normal standards outlandish and outrageous, very intense. Just have a look at this. What about eruptions? When may we expect tidal waves, eruptions, earthquakes? 
Well, because of the nature of the way the Earth has been treated over a long period of time, a tremendous amount of energy has built up within the Earth that cannot get out. If it doesn't get out, bang. So this is going to be released in a controlled manner, as controlled as possible through earthquakes, through volcanoes and such like. If they don't happen, this is not punishment, if they don't happen, there is no Earth. You see, you're still obviously bitter about people's rejection of your ideas. No, you absolutely not. What I am is frustrated at watching uh, Orwell's 1984 unfold in front of our eyes by the day while people focus on who shot Phil Mitchell. That, that, is, that is frustrating because my children and your children, thank you, are going to have to live, indeed, in the timescale, so are we because we're living in it now, when the most basics of, of freedoms are being taken away. Yeah, and this is happening all over the world and it's coordinated. Now, if people want to think that that's all happening by accident, please be my guest. I don't give a damn. But, who is, but the who's, evidence, who's the evidence it? is that it's not. Eh? If, it's, if it's controlled, it's not happening by accident, uh, who, who is controlling people or trying to control people? Well, there is a network of families that you can take back to the ancient world, to places like Babylon, Sumer, which is now Iraq. Um, you can chart them through to Rome, where they um, were responsible for the Roman Empire and the creation of the Roman Church. God save us from religion, by the way. Um, and, and then they came up into Europe to become the European aristocracy and royal families. Then through the um, great empires of Europe, especially the British Empire, but others too, these family bloodlines and the secret society network through which they manipulate themselves into power were exported all over the world. And then when the point came where the European colonial powers appeared to give independence to these countries, that was only on the surface. What actually happened was the family bloodlines and the secret society network through which they manipulate was left out in these former colonies and they've gone on controlling um, uh, them ever since. So what, what you have um, is a hidden hand where events are manipulated like 9-11, um, which not just me but endless other researchers now around the world have taken apart the official story. Uh, it insults the intelligence of a 10-year-old. Um, and you have a hidden hand manipulating events, and the whole um, goal of it is centralization of power, centralization of power to the point where humans are little more than controlled clones. Who is the uh, hidden hand? I mean, who, who are these hidden hands? Th this, this network of families I'm talking about. Um, you find that people that are in positions of apparent power, like prime ministers and presidents, are actually um, puppets of the real power which doesn't put itself on public display. Why would it? I mean, does anyone really think that George W. Bush is running America? Uh, eh? He probably couldn't tie his shoelaces, never mind run a country. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. Um, t tell me about the, the project for the new American century. It's tell just, me about it. I know nothing about it. Exactly. Well, let me tell you then some, something that you should know about. And this is written down. In the 1990s, a organization was created in America called the Project for the New American Century. The people who created it were the people that have run the Bush administration from the moment it came to power. In the year 2000, in September, the Project for the New American Century produced a report, a document, um, calling for a series of conquests of countries, um, one of which was Iraq. It actually says in the document was the effect of, we, mu we must use the excuse of Saddam Hussein to go into Iraq. But look, can I interrupt? No, hold a second. No, but honestly, no, 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 no. Honestly, no. you see this... See, but this is the thing, Terry, you see. No, but honestly... You, you, you say to me... America you, you is say an to, open society, isn't it? Oh, please! It's not an open society. <laughs> I've got some seafront property in Birmingham, Terry, you might like to buy, mate. Honestly. <laughs> please! Please! David. David. Uh, and they say I'm crazy and weird. <laughs> America is an open society. My Well, God. I, thought, I thought in my innocence that, that most Americans That's would know what the, was going on oh in America. Oh, God. 
but it's all you know it all and uh, oh see that, that, that's that, you talked about cheap jibes that's a cheap jibe no, it's I'm not, not claiming it's... I know it all I'm saying that I've been to 40 countries I've spent enormous amount of time in America talking to people who do know what's going on uh, victims of, of what's going on and um, and I'm passing this over over to people but now don't don't yeah don't sure you, but you see how preposterous it is what, the fact that you think America's an open society? No. Absolutely ludicrous, Terry. <laughs> I've never heard anything so stupid in your life. Thank okay. You. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. David Icke, thank you. Good luck with your mission. Pleasure. Thank you. So join me after the break, and I'll be chatting to Ulrika Johnson about life in the tabloids. You'd be mad to miss it. <laughs>